More than 200 years old. The rules that govern our country and protect the rights and freedoms of our citizens. It's the United States Constitution. I'm Bill Ward, and it's time to play Constitution Challenge. Let's meet today's contestants. From Berkshire High School, we have Tommy Kogan, Jenny Kaplan, and Frank Willis. Now, let's get started with the history of the Constitution and the amazing Americans who framed it. What was the reason the framers met in Philadelphia in 1787? A, to draw up a new Constitution, B, to amend the Articles of Confederation, or C, they really like cheesesteak. Sir, you have a second? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> create a new constitution? Your, new your, constitution, yeah. New constitution, okay. Uh, they're looking to amend. They're looking to amend their articles. There you go. I think they like Very the cheesesteak. Ah, uh, yeah, doesn't everybody? Cheesesteak. <laughs> 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 I'd probably go with the first. Yeah, the amending. To amend? Yeah. Okay. okay. 1787, they're here to amend the uh, the Articles of Confederation because they are too weak. All right. What do you think? Tell me, when they met, uh, when the guys met here in 1787, were they here to um, write a new constitution or to amend the Articles of Confederation or just because they like cheesesteak? I think they were here to write the constitution. Yeah, that's what they ended up doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but go ahead, what do you well, think? I was going to say they were under the guise of reforming, but what they really came to do was form a new confederation. So what's the correct answer? To draw up a new constitution. And? To change the Articles of Confederation. When the Founding Fathers met as delegates to the Constitutional Convention in May of 1787, they wanted to amend the Articles of Confederation and draw up a new constitution. So, both answers are right. But, what were the Articles of Confederation and why did they want to amend them? Well, they were the first set of rules used by the original 13 states. Okay, but why did they want to change them? Well, the Articles were okay, but they didn't work for everything. Like what? Well, the only way the government could get money was to ask the states for it. Kind of like me begging for my allowance. <laughs> you mean the ability to tax? Yeah, and it couldn't control trade with other countries or anything going on between the states. And what about treaties? Uh, the Confederation could make treaties, but couldn't force any of the states to follow them or pay off their debts to other countries. So why was that important? We owed a lot of money to other countries because of the Revolutionary War. And quite a bit of back pay to the soldiers from the Revolutionary War. All right, nice job, contestants. For the next round, we're talking about the Great Compromise. Now, several delegates to the Constitutional Convention proposed plans for how the government would work. The two major plans they discussed were the Virginia Plan and the New Jersey Plan. What did those plans propose? Let's check in with Dave on the street. Dave? The Virginia Plan in 1887, you said? The 17. 17, I'm sorry, 1777. Well, that was probably uh, after the war, right? The Civil War. I don't know. I think it had something to do with, like, the big states want, the like, smaller states wanting um, equal control and representation of the big states. Uh, the Virginia Plan was to have one House of Congress. Can you tell me what the Virginia Plan was? I have no idea. You have no idea? No idea at all. That's a very good question, and the very good answer that I can give you is that I have no idea, and I'm embarrassed to say that, but that's the truth. I'll tell you what, if you hold this a second, hold yeah. this to your muscle, we can hear you, I might be able to help you out here. Hang on a second. Okay. That's don't, a, tell oh. me, don't tell anybody. Okay. okay. There you go. Okay, here we go. The Virginia plan said that the government should be split into three branches. Oh, my God, I should know this. Legislative, judicial, and executive, and the Congress should have two groups based on population. Now, that is important, and I should know that. Uh, Dave, uh, what about the New Jersey plan? Can you take a guess what the New Jersey plan was about? I, again, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. New Jersey is a small state. What do you think they wanted? They wanted more per state because yeah. it was smaller. Well, New Jersey's a small state, so I imagine that they probably wanted like equal, you know, the equal amount of representatives per state. Um, I don't have any idea. Okay, well, see, I, I might be able to help you. It, it called for a single House of Congress with each state having same numbers of delegates. There you go. Good job. Good job. I don't hear anything about a compromise here. That made the big states mad. So they came up with a compromise that said that one would have an equal number from each state and the other would be based on the number of people in the state. 
Right. So, the Great Compromise gave us the House of Representatives with representation based on population and the Senate with equal representation from each state. What's this kind of government called? Uh, two camels. Uh, that's right, bicameral, or two houses. Line it up, baby! Can you tell me who was nicknamed the father of the Constitution? Uh, I believe that Benjamin Franklin? Thomas Jefferson. Benjamin Franklin. Jefferson? Thomas Joseph. Jefferson. Uh, Thomas Jefferson? Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. Wasn't born yet, but... Thomas Jefferson? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. All right, it's a sweep of wrong answers. He was in France at the time. Oh, I don't look like an idiot. No, you won't. You won't, because I'll help you out, okay? First of all, do you know who was nicknamed the father of the Constitution? I don't want to answer, because I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Thomas take it. Jefferson? That's a good guess. That was, he was, that was the Declaration of Independence. Do you know the name of the person who was nicknamed the father of the Constitution? Abraham Lincoln? Do you know who was nicknamed the father of the Constitution? No. You want to take a guess? No. Give the answer. What is he? Uh, I'll give you the answer. Just think of one the guy from the Wait. Constitution? Yeah. George Washington? It's a good guess. It's not right. Now, if you look over your shoulder at the name of the, on the building across the street there. Which building? The big, Madison? Madison. Madison. Do you remember you know Madison's first name? Oh, the president Madison? <laughs> right. What was his first name? I don't know. How about you? It starts we with a, win some? You do. Oh, wait. Let me, let me try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> starts with a J. John, John Ma James. James Madison. Right, James Madison. Madison. Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, James Madison. All right. So there you go. Yeah, I knew, I knew we could get it if James I helped up. How about it, contestants? Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Well, those were both good guesses. You can't ignore Jefferson or Franklin, but another framer takes center stage. His name was James Madison. Madison and his fellow Virginia delegate Edmund Randolph proposed the Virginia Plan. Now, our next question has to do with another compromise. What was the three-fifths compromise? Dave, what do you have? I can't remember that one. Wow, I've never heard of that before. Okay. Where your your population determines how many people you get to vote in Congress. It was a compromise that all the slaves would be worth three fifths of like the population till for like senators, like population for the representatives. Three fifths compromise. Battle. It had to do with slavery. How? It was a way to keep the southern states happy by saying that every five slaves would count as three people. Now, why was that important to the southern states? Even though slavery was wrong, the Constitution allowed it by letting them count the slaves as part of their non-voting population. The representation in Congress was a big argument that the delegates to the Constitutional Convention had. The small states wanted representation based equally between the states. You know, a large state would get the same representation as a small state. The large states, on the other hand, wanted representation based on population. And the more people, the greater the representation in Congress. And if you could count slaves as full individuals, they would have greater representation in Congress. Of course, that didn't fly with everybody in the convention. And that's why the three-fifths compromise was agreed to, so that slaves would be counted as three-fifths of a person for the purposes of population. Well, how'd we do today? Well, let's take a look. Tommy, you ended up with 50 points. Jenny, you've got 75. And Frank, well, you're in last place with 40 points. Frank, it's been a lot of fun, but you've got to make room for our next contestant. Bob, tell him what he gets. Today's program was brought to you by Knowledge in the Can. Helpful hints about history that you can take with you anywhere. So, who won today's game of Constitution Challenge? These two, and you. I'm Bill Ward. Thanks to all of our contestants, both on the street and in the studio, for taking the Constitution Challenge. So long. <laughs> <laughs>